Imagine this quaint village has a barber. Let's call him Sam. Now, Sam has a very particular rule about how he runs his barber shop. Sam's rule is straightforward, right? If you don't shave yourself, Sam will shave you. If you do shave yourself, Sam won't bother. Simple enough. At least it seems that way. Let's break it down. The rule creates two types of men in the village. Men who shave themselves. These guys have it handled. Men who don't shave themselves. Sam steps in to give them a clean shave. But here's where it gets tricky. The question is, who shaves Sam? If Sam only shaves those men who do not shave themselves, then who shaves the barber? If Sam shaves himself, it seems to break his own rule because he should only shave those who do not shave themselves. But if he doesn't shave himself, then, according to his rule, he should be shaving himself. This is the barber paradox, and it's more than just a silly riddle. It highlights a fundamental problem with self-reference, where something refers to itself in a way that leads to a contradiction. The barber is stuck in an infinite loop. No matter what he decides, he ends up breaking the rule. If he shaves himself, he shouldn't, and if he doesn't shave himself, he should. There's no consistent solution. This paradox was formulated by the legendary logician and mathematician, Bertrand Russell, back in the early 20th century. Russell used the barber paradox to illustrate a deeper problem in set theory, a fundamental branch of mathematics that deals with collections of objects. Russell posed a similar paradox in set theory. Imagine a set that contains all sets that do not contain themselves. Does this set contain itself? If it does contain itself, then by definition, it shouldn't. But if it doesn't contain itself, then it must. The same logical loop emerges, causing a contradiction that breaks the foundation of set theory. The Barber paradox and Russell's paradox both hinge on self-reference, a kind of logical minefield that makes certain statements impossible to resolve. It's like trying to create a book of all the books that do not mention themselves. Should this book mention itself or not? Either answer leads us to a contradiction. The reason this paradox is so fascinating is because it shows that sometimes our logical systems break down when they're pushed to extremes. We humans love making rules, systems, and categories. But what happens when a system tries to include itself? Self-referential paradoxes aren't just found in barbershops or set theory. You've probably heard of the liar's paradox, a statement that says, this statement is false. If it's true, then it must be false. But if it's false, then it must be true. Again, we get stuck in a loop with no consistent answer. Russell's work on paradoxes eventually led to the development of new systems of logic, like Russell and Whitehead's Principia Mathematica, a monumental attempt to rebuild mathematics on a more consistent foundation. Later, Kurt Gödel would come along and show that even these improved systems have limits. Gödel's incompleteness theorems proved that no matter how carefully we build a system of logic, there will always be truths that cannot be proven within the system itself. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, the Barber Paradox isn't just a riddle to stump your friends. It's a window into the deeper complexities of logic and mathematics. It reminds us that not all questions have simple answers, and some systems are bound to have limitations no matter how logical they seem. Sometimes, even the simplest question, who shaves the barber, can reveal the incredible complexity lurking beneath the surface of our everyday lives. Paradoxes are everywhere, even today. Whether it's in the algorithms that power our technology or the limits of human understanding, the lessons from the barber paradox remind us to be careful about self-reference and to question the assumptions we make. If you enjoyed exploring the strange logic of the barber paradox, make sure to subscribe to Quest IQ. Remember, life is full of paradoxes, and sometimes the more we think we understand, the more we realize there's still so much to learn.